presenters for the next hour. Welcome to the reasonably new 2022 Cardin School Radio Shack Show, CSRS for short. Today we have lots in our program. Each person you meet today we are asking them the same question. What is one thing you're grateful for and why? So Evie, what is one thing you are grateful for and why? I'm grateful for my family because they do so much for me. Zoe, what is one thing you're grateful for and why? I am grateful for my friends because they support me. Right, let's get into the show, eh? First up, we'd like to introduce you to our radio team for today's broadcast. Can you all introduce yourself and answer this question? What is one thing you're grateful for and why? Kia ora koutou, my name is Faya Mel and I am working with these amazing students getting this radio show ready for you guys. And the thing that I'm grateful for today is the sunshine because it keeps us warm and gives us daylight to do some amazing things while we're at school. Hi, I'm Joseph. Um, I like food. It's yum. Hi, I'm Clodagh. Um, I'm grateful for my family and friends. Hi, I'm Riley, and I'm interviewing the teachers, and I'm grateful for fresh air. Kia ora, I'm Stella, and I'm grateful for my friends because they're always there for me. Hi, I'm Troy, and I'm grateful for my family. That is our amazing radio team for today. We look forward to planning and working on our next show for Term 4. Before we get into our first item, we would like to thank our FM for making this show possible for us at Carden School. I'm sure we will be learning lots about how to put a show together and how radio stations work. No doubt we'll be doing lots of learning. For our first item today is Room 5. They're sharing some of their learning with us. Benson, my alien is called Jane and she is mad. She is muscly, green and her feet is yellow. Her tail is blue. My alien loves in, lives in very dark space. My alien has five heads. His name is Mr. Weedy Man. He has 43 eyes. The colour on him are purple. And grey. He has very sharp teeth and and he likes to eat people. He kind of looks like a Minecraft fat guy. He has 61 sharp teeth and all of the teeth are golden. He has no nose. He is 744 years old. My name's Sam. My alien is called Goosebumps. She has nine 
teeth and she has 14 eyes. There is two aliens in my picture. Goosebumps has both hands on each um, both aliens have green all over. My alien is called James. The colours are black, purple, yellow, blue and red. My alien has three legs. My alien has ten eyes. My alien has five hands. My alien has eight arms. That was fantastic, Room 5. We have an amazing staff here at Cardin School who encourage students to do fantastic learning, play sports, celebrate events and go on trips and camps. We are going to introduce you to a member of staff each time we go on air. Today we have an interview with our Deputy Principal, Mr Hill. I'm Riley and I'm interviewing Mr Hill. So our first question is, how long have you been teaching for? So I've been teaching for nine years. I started off teaching in the Wairapa at a school called Fernridge School for two years. Then I went down south for a short stint and then moved over to London and taught there for a year. And then ever since I've been back at Carden School. So in total, nine years teaching. Wow. So why did you want to become a teacher? So I guess for me, I want to become a teacher because I really want to support Tamariki and make sure they reach their full potential as well as provide them with opportunities that other kids might not get and that I didn't get when growing up. So I think it's really important that we are out there helping to support the youth who are the future. Why did you want to become a deputy principal? Good question, Riley. I guess I was passionate about implementing change at Cardin School. I saw there was lots of things that I thought I could either impact or improve on. And that was one of my goals by coming Deputy Principal here. Another reason for me becoming De Deputy Principal was to sort support sorry, some of our children who need a little bit more help and making sure that they feel valued within the school environment. So, yeah. Yes. Well, you have impacted our school very much in a good way. So what is it like being the Deputy Principal at Carterton School? Good question. I guess it can be challenging but also rewarding at times. It's important to reflect upon where you began, so where I started and what is working and what needs to be adapted and changed. Every day is different, no day is the same and that's what I guess is a bit of a cool thing about being a principal as well as a teacher. Nothing ever is the same in the job and it's really important to be adaptable and flexible and be there to help support the teachers, the staff, the principal and everyone else who works in the school. Yes, yes. So what is the most rewarding thing about your job? I think definitely the most rewarding thing for me is seeing children who, even like now the year eight sitting around me in the room, who I taught four years ago, five, three years ago, and seeing the growth and change that they've had over the years. So that for me is really important, to see how much children develop by being influenced by others around the school. Yes. So... Is being the deputy principal ever a hard job? Tell us why. Uh, every day is different and new challenges arise within a school setting. It's important that I remain flexible and adaptable to change. I think it's really important to keep positive around school to make sure that everyone's feeling ha happy. I mean, some days can feel stressful, but I guess it's making the most out of the opportunities that get put in front of you and making sure that everyone is feeling valued within the school environment, so teachers and students. Yes, yes. So why do you like, what do you like to do when you are not at work, not teaching and being deputy principal? I guess for me it's relaxing and finding time to unwind. So for me I love getting outside, bush walks, biking, fishing, golfing, going on trips anywhere. So and that normally happens in the school holidays <laughs> when I get a bit of downtime. So making time for myself and just relaxing and doing things that are a bit different from school and trying to get my head out of all the things that happen at school time. So that's important to me. Yes, relaxing is very nice. <laughs> so before we finish the interview, we asked the person we interviewed two final questions. So this episode, we are asking each person we meet this question. What is the... What is one thing that you are grateful for and why? 
So the thing I'm grateful for, Riley, is definitely having family and friends in my life. I guess they're really supportive, they're encouraging, they're there for me. They are always someone I can lean to, or definitely if I have any questions or need to seek support, they're there for me to help. Also, I guess I'm grateful for the people I work with because they're fully adaptive, they're flexible, and they get along with each other. So I think at school here, really grateful for the culture that we have within our staff. Yes, family and friends are very helpful. So what's your favourite song and why? This was a good question because Mr. listens to a bit of alternative music. So I put down here someone called Shit Faker. And I bet you all the kids in the classroom around me have never heard of him. So I guess for me it's just the fact that I love the music that he produces. And probably when the kids around me are older, they might even learn to hear who Shit Faker is. And I love his music. So for me it just relaxes me puts me in a good mood and that's why he's one of my favourite artists at the moment. Yes, thank you Mr Hill for giving up your time to answer some questions. And thank you Riley for having me today. Being Deputy Principal would be a hard but rewarding job I'm sure. Here is Troy giving you information about the song. Before you begin, Troy, what is one thing you're grateful for and why? My family, Nichols, James Murphy, born 23rd June, 1988, known as Chet Faker, an Australian singer and songwriter. It is from the album Hotel Surrender and was released in 2021. Why so pretty? I'm asking you really You beg me don't hurt me With the keys to my city With the eyes in your head Gonna make me don't care About anything else With the voice in my head I just wanna know about Whatever love gets you there
our listeners some information about Carter and school so they can learn more about our school and what happens here. Here is Stella reporting to us about Carter and school. Before you begin, Stella, what is one thing you are grateful for and why? I'm grateful for my friends because they're always supportive. Carter school is a full primary school catering for children from new entrance to year 8, 5 to 13 year olds. The school is situated near the centre of the town by Carrington Park in the Carterton Event Centre. The school rolls approximately 240 children. Carterton School has a modern teaching environment in an outstanding setting, which includes a hall, swimming pool, turf, generous library and spacious grounds. The school staff are a dedicated team who are keen to be fully involved and positively contribute to all the aspects of school life. Staff and curriculum responsibilities are shared. High quality support staff gives assistance to our wonderful teaching staff. The school operates in four learning teams to create a sense of belonging and teamwork amongst the similar age groups. Carden School creates a lot of learning with a safe, within a safe, caring, respectful and sustainable environment where individual excellence and diversity is valued. Thank you, Stella. Having a connection between staff, students, whānau and community is important here at Carterton School. Here's Joseph explaining how Carterton School communicates to the school community. Firstly, we have our school newsletter. The newsletter is our main form of communication with families in regards to events, notices, celebrations and reminders. It also includes an overview of weekends, weeks ahead. Our fortnightly newsletter is emailed to all families in the news email group. Please see the office team if you would like your email address added. The newsletter is also viewable on the school Facebook page at School Loop app. Second, secondly, there is a Carterton School Facebook page. If you if you like the Carterton School Facebook page, you will see you will receive notifications of the following things like upcoming school events and activities, latest newsletter, photos of school events and activities, school clo closures, change to times and dates for activities due to weather or circumstances. Thirdly, all of our school teams have a private Facebook page. This means it is only for the Fano of students in that team. The child's teacher will invite Fano members to join the team page or you can request to join. Include your child's name in the request. Teachers use these groups to share notices, reminders and information about current learning in the class. Photos of the class activities and events and team specific information in a private group chat that is only accessible to group members. L lastly, some of the team use, use only forms of school and home communication. For example, Team Kawakawa teachers use Seesaw as a platform to share student work and class activities with families. This app can be downloaded on both Apple and Android devices. There is so much happening at Carden School. These communication forms are a great way of sharing and learning cool experiences and what the amazing students are up to here at Carden School. The students are amazing. To celebrate how amazing our students are, we have reward systems like Mahi Pai tickets and class certificates. We are a positive behaviour for Learning School PB4L and base our conversations about class and about school expectations around our three R's. Respect myself, mana motahaki, respect others, mana kitanga, respect our environment, kaitiaki tanga. When students get a mahi pai ticket, they go on a weekly draw to win a prize at assembly and also a major prize at the end of the year. The more tickets, the more entries they have in the draws. Here is Stella telling you about our learning environment. <laughs> At Carden School, we are pleased to offer two different learning environments. These are mainstream classrooms and our Akungamari classroom. Both learning environments have wonderful, engaging teachers, learning resources, and follow the New Zealand curriculum. Mainstream classes follow the regular patterns of other schools. Classes are divided up into year groups with children the same age in their class. These classes also form school teams. In these teams, they often work on particular projects at the same time pooling resources, ideas and activities. This creates a community feel within the school as students all know each other and enjoy learning together. Akunga Māori provides a Māori enrichment learning environment. 
Akunga Māori is provided to all learners of any cultural descent or background. There is no need for any prior knowledge or understanding of te reo, just a genuine interest in learning te reo Māori and Māori culture. Our Akunga Māori has two classes that cater for year 0 to 8. It is a whānau based class focusing on te reo Māori, te kunga Māori and also te ao Māori. Integrated, integrated and central to this culturally responsive environment. Māori language, culture, heritage and identity are celebrated and essential components to our heritage and unique to Aotearoa. Akunga Māori is a special learning place where Māori is celebrated. The learning in reading, writing and maths is taught in English. This learning environment has proved to be effective and successful and provides positive outcomes and achievements providing all learners with the opportunity to get what they require to realise their, new, their unique potential and succeed in their lives at Maud, as Māori and New Zealanders. These days are pretty busy, but we have bells that ring to indicate learning and break times. These are quarter past eight, the school, the school gates open. 8.55, school starts, which is block one. At 10.20, we have morning tea. At 10.40, we return to class for block two. 12 o'clock is lunch time and 12.40 return to class uh, and for block three. 1.45 is afternoon tea and 2 o'clock return back to class for block four and 3 o'clock school finishes. All school assemblies are held on Fridays at 5 past 9 in the school hall. Carlton School aims to provide its students with as many activities and experiences as possible. Exposure to these opportunities allows the students to grow into confident, independent and forward-thinking people who trust in their abilities and decision-making processes. These include school bicycles, sports equipment, hoverboards, sports turf, rugby fields, netball and basketball courts, jungle gym and monkey bars, confidence courses, school gardens, kapahaka, iPads, scooter and rollerblade days, karaoke, prep, school trips, camps and sports tournaments. As we said before, we have so much to do and opportunities. One of my favourite things to do at school is playing on the swing. Another one of my favourite things to do is go to science at Kudanui College. Once a term, we, the year 7 and 8, travel to Kudanui College for a day of science. We do activities around fingerprints, DNA, Bunsen burners, dyes and botany. Once a year, the year six is also get a chance to attend my favourite uh, to attend. My favourite science activity has been working with the cow's eyeballs. My favourite science activity has been learning about the parts of a flower. Another highlight of these days is, vid is visiting the canteen. Another highlight of the week is when the year seven and eights go to Makota College for tech. Here is Clara exp explaining what we do at tech. <laughs> Every Tuesday during morning tea, the Year 7 and 8s get a bus to ride it to Makota College, where the program is held. The four categories are woodwork, cooking, sewing and laser work. In woodwork, you get taught how to use the machines they provide. Once you are used to the machines, you get taught how to make really cool things like utility boards and board games. These can be for you, your whānau, friends, etc. In cooking, you get to make a variety of delicious and healthy foods to eat for lunch, take home to enjoy, share with friends and whānau. In sewing, you get to make things like bags, door stoppers and cases. Sometimes you can make an apron, you can make it with a few words on your, your choice printed onto it as well. It can be for yourself, a gift for a friend, a gift for whānau, or things like that. In laser work, you can make things like jewellery, bracelets or necklaces, money boxes or light-up boxes. It's a lot of fun and very rewarding when you get to bring home your work. Another rewarding thing Carden School is doing at the moment is prep. Recently, Carden School has been working hard on their version of primary enterprise program prep by participating in and managing a Carden School prep society. Students make choices about their role in the society, working for a venture or service or taking a role in the bank or the warehouse. The students develop financial literacy knowledge, skills and strategies for managing personal money and business accounts and learn how economies and governments operate in New Zealand and overseas. It is amazing to see so much creativity, problem solving, collaboration 
and engagement across the school. All the ventures and services show learning through STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Coming up in a couple of weeks, we have our market day where we will be able to sell the goods we have made and also go shopping with the wages we've earned. Next up, we have an interview with our staff member who is overseeing the prep program at Carterton School. It's me, Riley, again, and I'm here interviewing Miss Kennedy, our roommate teacher. So, how long have you been teaching for? Um, Riley, I've been teaching since 2000 uh, when I began my training. So, next year, 2023, makes my 20th year in the classroom. Wow. That's quite a while. So why did you want to become a teacher? I didn't actually think about being a teacher until one of my children's teachers suggested I trained. I spent a lot of time at their school at Woodlands Primary in Apotiki doing a lot of different things like helping out in the classroom, reading with small groups, Friday electives, school camps, rural safety days, pet talk and pet judging. At that time, I ran the SPCA there in Apotiki, so this gave me time during the day to spend lots of time at school with my own children. Wow, it's like hitting two birds with one stone. So what is it like being a teacher at Carterton School? Carterton School is an exciting place where everyone, including students and teachers, have the opportunity to do many awesome things. It's big enough that students can make lots of different friends and small enough to still have that country feel. I have made many friends here at this place and it feels like my second home. I'm into my 15th year here and I never thought when I started in 2008 that I would stay this long. But I just love this school, its environment and its people. Well, it looks like it's had a really good impact on you. So what is the most rewarding thing about your job? I think the most rewarding thing about being a teacher for me is being able to make every moment a teaching moment. I love it when the students are actively learning and excited about being at school and I really love seeing our past students out in the workforce making a difference. Yes. So is being a teacher ever a hard job? Tell us why. Yes, it can be, Riley. There are times when you have to make a call home that's not pleasant times when you have to put the growly voice on to get the students back on track and times when you have to be really honest with people without meaning to upset them. Any job when you're dealing with people, children, can be tough. You just have to find a balance in your own life so it doesn't wear you down and realise there are many more pluses than minuses about being a teacher and realise that a child and a parent is a lot harder. Yes, so what is your favourite thing about Carterton School? I love being able to do many different activities at school like pet day, prep, school trips and just about anything that's a little different and exciting. These are the things that children remember and the experiences they learn most from. I might, it might not be reading and writing and maths, but learning about life is just as important for yes. me. I know that prep is really exciting. So what do you like to do when you are not at work and not teaching? Well... I have my granddaughter Quinn every second weekend so that keeps me really busy. She's three and a half years old and I learn so much from her, it's amazing. At the moment we're learning to read so I've got to make that extra fun for a three and a half year old. I also breed and sell birds which keeps me busy, plus I have three cats that rule the roost. When I can I go back to Rotorua, that's my hometown, to be with my whanau and I catch up with my sister and Nelson. Wow, you have pretty busy free times. So can you please tell us about the PrEP program? PrEP or the Primary Enterprise Program is a program where students can learn about running their own business. It's one of those teaching times when students don't realise they're learning and teachers learn so much about the class in a different environment. PrEP allows students to experience successes and sometimes failures in a safe situation. You may wonder why we would allow failures at school but it's a really important lesson for students and one that can, they can learn without major consequences and most people experience failure at some times in their lives. Students have to learn how to manage a group and work cooperatively in their group. They have to learn to compromise, they have to learn to understand that all business money is involved and this happens while everyone is having fun. So preps about financial literacy self and group management, resilience, cooperation, plus learning everyday skills. 
Then we have the big market day and we get to spend all our hard-earned cash. So how cool is that? Preparing for business. So thank you. Before we finish the interview, we ask the person we interview two final questions. This episode, we are asking each person we meet this question. What is one thing you are grateful for and why? I think the biggest thing I'm grateful for um, and I discovered this when I went back to Rotorua, which is my hometown, and you've probably heard a lot about Rotorua in the media of late. I'm grateful for the life that I have and being able to share it with very cool people at work and at home. And I know there are lots of families that don't have that life, so that's what I'm really grateful for. Mm, life is a privilege. So what's your favourite song and why? Oh, I have hundreds of different favourite songs. If you've been around as long as I have, you would understand. It depends on how I feel at the time. But I think my most favourite song at school is something that touches my soul. So I love Sprinkle a Little Sunshine by Kathy B and Susie Cato. I love it because it reminds me that no matter how bad we're feeling, we can change it. Mm. Thank you, Miss Kennedy. Running the prep program would be a hard but rewarding job. I know I enjoy doing the prep work and I'm looking forward to spending my money at market day. Mrs Kennedy said her favourite song was Sprinkle a Little Sunshine. Here is Troy giving you information about the song. The singers are Keith B and Susie Cato. It is from the album, album Sprinkle a Little Sunshine. It was released in 2018. If you're starting to think that the clouds are here to stay If you're starting to think that they'll never go away If you're starting to think that the sky is always grey Well hold on If you're starting to think that the rain will never stop If you're starting to think it gets worse with every drop If you're starting to think it's the same thing every day Well hold on You're lost in the Milky Way Well, hold on If you're starting to think That you're running out of puff If you're starting to think That you've really had enough Take a deep breath Shake it off Sometimes bad All you gotta do is Sprinkle a little sunshine
second item today, we would like to introduce to you Team Kofi. They're sharing some of their learning with us. That was fantastic, Team Kofi. Can we please ask two of you our question of the day? What, what is one thing you're grateful for and why? Hi, my name's Sophia and I'm grateful for having such a great teacher and she has such great, great teaching skills. Hi, my name is Louie and I'm thankful for my friends and family and I, I think I am grateful for them because they help me when I'm hurt and they're really thankful for me. We chose this song because we learnt it when we had God as our spelling word. It seemed a good song for this week when we had a new king. The change in God of Buckingham Palace. Christopher Robin went down with Alice. Alice is marrying one of the guys, a soldier's life is terribly hard. 
We have many opportunities for our students, especially in leadership roles. One of the roles is being a house captain. Our school is divided up into four houses. Each house is made up of various year levels and have a staff representative. The children often participate in house competitions or wear, or wear house colours for sports, say, like swimming sports, athletics, cross country. The houses are Tui, Blue, Cortati, Yellow, Weka, Green and Hilia Red. The students have been active helping create the school entranceway. Here's Clota telling you more about it. After a long wait for the students in the Cardiden School community, we are excited to say we have a brand spanking new front entrance to our school. The plans to build a new entrance began way back in 2007 and now after 15 years of waiting it's finally here. This year, during Term 1 and 2, energetic students helped by planting trees, shrubs and moving bark limes and limestone for the gardens and paths. Our bright new signage and map of the school arrived, thanks to Lisa Rushworth. A wooden ship and seats were also built by Tom Conwell to create a playful and relaxing atmosphere. During the opening, Matua Jordan Fox delivered a special cut of care to the whole school while we walked through the new paths and coloured the concrete and admired all the trees and shrubs that we helped plant. Then the gold ribbon was cut to officially open the R entranceway. We lined up on the courts and sang a wire Mr Jacket spoke about this inspiring new environment and thanked those that helped our kura in this journey. Blake, one of our new entrants, said, I love pretending to be a pirate on the wooden ship. Harry, one of our seniors, said, it's a very nice entranceway and I'm looking forward to seeing the native trees grow. One of our teachers, Mr Bailey, said, The colours brighten up for the school and it's a nice sight when people first arrive at school. A fantastic first impression. We think that the new entranceway is a stunning asset to Cardiff School and we are very thankful that it is now completed and open for us to use and to play in. The entranceway is a great place to play and be active in. I am also grateful for all the PE we do here at Cardin School. We have amazing staff here at Cardin School who encourage us to do our best in all areas, both in and out of the classroom. Next up, we are going to introduce you to a new member of staff. Here is an interview of Mr Bailey and he will be explaining the Move Well, Move well program to us all. Hi, it's Riley for the last time and I'm here with Mr Bailey, our Room 13 teacher. So first question, how long have you been teaching for? Hi Riley, thanks for having me here today. Um, I've been teaching coming up to about 10 years now. Um, it's been at a couple of different schools, um, but it's been a rewarding journey. I've learnt a lot in my nearly 10 years of journeying. Yes, yeah, so why did you want to become a teacher? That's a great question, Riley. Um, I remember in Year 9 and 10 I had an awesome physical education teacher. Uh, his name was Mr Robinson. He was the only teacher that uh, let us call him by his first name, which was Angelo, or Lo for short. Um, he was also my basketball coach 
and he was such a, a careful, effective, and chill teacher. I was like, oh, maybe I can do this for a career. And with that um, seed in my mind, a little over 10 years later, boom, Mr. Bailey in the classroom. So you're inspired. Very. So what is it like being a teacher at Carterton School? Another great question, Riley. I enjoy being here because it's a full primary. Most of my teaching career has been at intermediate level, year 7 and 8, and a little bit at high school, which was year 9 to 12. Um, so I think seeing a larger range of kids has taught me a lot about um, how they learn, but also um, how you can learn so much being around different aged children. Mm, so you've been taught by students? Always, every day. <laughs> so what is the most rewarding thing about your job? Oh, rewarding. Well, um, other than being financially rewarded, um, seeing kids grow. It's great seeing kids go from uh, point A on the alphabet. Some people it's to point B and some kids get to Z. But what we and myself like to see is that little bit of progress. So mm -hmm. as long as you come out a little bit better than you were, or a lot better, you've made progress, and I think kids should be proud of that. And there's nothing better than planting seeds in kids' hearts and minds and seeing them grow and soar from there. So you're not just being bribed to teach us? No, it's not just the money. Yeah. So is being a teacher ever a hard job? Tell us why. Oh, another great thought-provoking question there, Riley. Um, it can be um, in the sense that it can be difficult to find a work-life balance. You've probably seen some teachers who stay here a long time after school get here very early before school. And some days it takes a lot more um, energy and effort to do certain um, activities. So we might take a long time marking, um, planning, or we have a big event that day. And so sometimes it can be difficult being away from our families and friends. Um, but at the same time, as, as long as you know we use our time effectively, and I think you'll find that with all teachers, it's always that trying to find that work life and home life. So that's something I'm always working on. It's a never-ending battle. Mm, trying to balance out your life. Yes. So what is your favourite thing about Carterton School? Oh, a few things. Um, first one that comes to mind is the great staff we have here. I think to function well as a school, you need to have a great, diverse range of staff. Um, I like being around um, Mr Jacket and the other teachers because they teach me a lot. Um, we have teachers who have been here for 20, 20 plus years and so I feel blessed to be able to learn off them. Um, I like the diverse range of learners. Um, <clears throat> one of my favourite things that we do here is uh, to a kanatena or when we take our seniors to Tinkawakawa, the juniors, and we do some buddy publishing, writing, play little games with them. So just um, basically learning off our little ones as much as they learn off us. And also I love the fact that we have a lot of outdoor space in our school. We've got so many opportunities um, to put the Move Well program into action, which I'm sure we'll talk about after. Yes. But what school is right next to Carrington Park? I think it's just us. Mm. What a great opportunity. Mm. So what do you like to do when you are not at work and not teaching? Oh, another great question, Riley. Other than spending time with my wife and daughter, I enjoy traveling with them. Um, I was recently blessed to go with them to Hawaii in the previous holidays for a week and a bit and just um, soak up the sun with them. Um, so I, I love to get around the country, but also different places around the world. It's always good to learn and um, understand different cultures and the way they live. So that's a thing I like to do. Other than that, I like to follow sports, um, NRL, that's rugby league, and also basketball and hopefully Steve Adams um, can pull it off soon. 
before he retires, so fingers crossed. Mm. So can you please tell us about the Move Well, Move well program? Yeah, so the Move Well program, uh, we've implemented it here uh, quite strongly. It's a physical education, physical activity program where there are a set of um, activities that teachers can draw from uh, to help their kids grow, um, not only to be better physically in, in, with sports skills, like throwing, catching, teamwork, but <clears throat> but also just to learn um, learn more um, learn more from others. Um, so, for example, last term we focused on invasion games. So we had, for example, cast a castle. We played a game of bench ball. Um, and in these games, they teach you not only your throwing and catching skills, but how to um, work with others and how to um, work effectively as a team. Because there will be times in our lives when we have to either work alone or in a team. And the move of resource uh, really pushes that to work with others. But sometimes you have to stand on your own two feet um, and, and be confident and be ready because we don't, we don't know when we might get called upon. Um, for example, at high school, you might get pulled up. Okay, can I have you, you and you on stage? You're going to do this for us? Go. Or it might be just, uh, Mr. Bailey, can you stand up and give us an explanation or a cartwheel so we can assist you in PE? Um, so I think the Move Our Resource helps us to be not only more skilled, but just more confident um, and there's so many games in there. And it's all online. It's free. So if you wanted to have a nosy yourself, Riley, or anyone else, you could go on to um, pens.org.nz slash movewell and have a look at the plethora of activities that are available. So if you want to up, do your throwing, um, do your throwing up, you can look at the throwing activities. You can look at the invasion ones. So if you want to be better at castle and try and win. What house are you again, Riley? Huia. So if you want Huia to get more W's on the board, you can have a look at the strategies um, there and how you can um, how you can improve your game. So it's basically an instructional guide for students and teachers um, to be more proficient in moving well. <laughs> I know I have certainly learned a lot from move well. So thank you and aloha. So before we finish the interview, we asked the person we interviewed two final questions. This episode, we are asking each person we meet this question. What is one thing that you are grateful for and why? Oh, another great thought-provoking question, Riley. Um, so one thing I'm grateful for is <clears throat> my family. Um, I think it's really important that you always have someone in your corner. Um... um always having that support and always knowing that at the end of the day you've got those people backing you no matter what because as teachers sometimes you have a tough day sometimes you have a, a great day and it's just great to share whatever news you have with your family and loved ones um, and as it brings you closer together and maybe they can help you learn from it um, that day like what went good what didn't go well um, but yeah, really great for my family and I'm look for, looking forward to our next trip. Mm. Family is very helpful. So what is your favourite song and why? Oh, another great question, Riley. Uh, favourite song at the moment is uh, Float and that's by Eric Nam. Uh, that is from the motion picture soundtrack uh, from Hotel Transylvania 3. Um, and that's about um, that that song just reminds me like it's great to get out with your loved ones and and float away, get out, see the world, explore, and just have a good time along the way. Mm, float to Hawaii. Yes, please. <laughs> Aloha, everyone. Being a teacher would be a hard but rewarding job, I'm sure. Mr. Bailey said his favourite song was Float by Eric Nam. Here is Troy giving you information about the song. Eric Nam was born November 17 in, in 1988. Here he is an American singer, songwriter and television 
personality of Korean descent. This song from the album Float, it was released 2018. It is pop music. Don't need no destination, baby, come on to the end of our show so thanks again our fm for supporting us here at carden school and making a radio show possible tune in again next month on our fm to hear information about our amazing awesome school and what is happening here at school our intro and outro music has been provided by the carden school kappa hakatua kana Ropu. here are your we are your presenters for today evie and zoe kakita anor and goodbye until next time